get onto the dance floor, you crazy cats. This is the Cisco Disco. So, we got the 3750 a few weeks ago, and as you know, it had a dead power supply. So, I had a new one shipped out from UK. I'm gonna install it, I'm gonna test it. We're gonna clean, we're gonna poke, we're gonna get this working again. So, joking over, here's the chassis. I already took the lid off, and you can see the motherboard's loose there. That's my bad, I didn't record me taking the screws out. But anyway, this is the, uh, the bottom plate with the main board on it. You can see the plastic there. The plastic just basically a light transmitter um, conduit, in fact, doesn't do anything, it's a piece of plastic. So the LED underneath the plastic will allow the, uh, the light to shine through the plastic and then out through the front. So when you see blinken lichten, das blinken lichten, this is how it's done. Pretty cool. All right, so we're pretty dusty. I just took an anti-static brush and uh, swept a lot of dust away. And uh, I'm just taking a look at the traces, making sure nothing's uh, gone wrong. This switch was my first switch. I bought this from eBay in 2000, I guess it would be eight. Um, and so from new, I think it was 2004. It's a really old switch. And it's only fast ethernet. Uh, it does have some gig ethernet SFP slots there, but for the majority it's fast ethernet. Now, you know on eBay you'll see these guys and I'm like, 10 gig, oh I'm 10 gig, oh I'm 25 gig, oh. Well, Richie's lab doesn't need that kind of power. <laughs> In fact, most networks don't need that kind of power. And to push that sort of load is, is not an easy job. So just reconsider yourself. Just check yourself before you wreck yourself. You may not need that gig switch. Uh, for me, I'm using this fast ethernet switch as a, an out-of-band management network, so this is fairly common as well. You'll see this even today uh, in, in, in big networks. Uh, fast ethernet switches are, are uh, not as common as they used to be, you know, most people have scrapped them now, you know, so you can pick them up really cheap off eBay. And as an out-of-band management network, fast ethernet is a great option for you. Very low bandwidth, and uh, you get all the fun and features of a full managed switch, but with really minimal cost. So, this is the new power supply. This was the meat and potatoes of what I was doing today. It's not brand new. In fact, there's a, there's a lot of dust in this as one as well. I had to take the vacuum to it and a brush to it. But it, I didn't do anything with it other than that. Just a quick uh, cursory check to make sure that everything looked okay. No leaks and so on. Just did a, mul a, volt a multimeter check there. Just checked the voltage for the main board and for the fans was in place. We're okay, we're pushing 12 volts to the fans, everything looks looks pretty good. So with the power supply checked, uh, the next thing to move on to was, can we get the board to switch on? Uh, it just takes two two of these pinouts here. It looks like an ATX supply, but like half, half the thickness, and that's, that's fair enough. In fact, there isn't even a switch on this board. You can't turn it off and on, there's no rock switch, so you attach the power and the thing comes on. That's good and bad. Good meaning you don't have to worry about a power switch failing. Bad meaning it comes on as soon as you plug it in, so uh, be ready for some noise. All right, so with the power supply uh, 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 switched on, pretty much the whole board came alive. This is a quick FLIR check, just to make sure that there's nothing overheating. Um, the main uh, ICs there that you can see shine and away are the ones where the fans are directed upon, and um, so there's no there's no reason why they wouldn't be cooled. In fact, there's a fan directly blowing on those ones, so it's all good. Uh, I didn't see any problems. Nothing hot that shouldn't be hot. And uh, yeah, nice little, I don't know, something to show, I guess. Okay, so now to something completely different, as they would say on at Monty Python. We've got these fans here. The Cisco 3750 has three. Uh, 40 mil by 40 mil by 20 mil, I think, uh, fans. And um, I can't remember the manufacturer, but they are loud. Um, I've ordered some new ones to be sent to me, some Noctua, which should be way less noisy. These are rated at 49 decibels, and the Noctuas will be 14, so way quieter. And what I'm going to do here is simulate a fan failure just to show you what happens when. Uh, it recognizes there's a fan fault. Somebody has to pick up the slack. And in this case, you can see that one of the bomb is <laughs> getting a little bit more excited. The microphone didn't pick up the uh, raising volume on that one, but here we go. 
Let's leave one behind and see what happens. Woo! So, there you go. You don't want this thing really near your face. <laughs> you don't want to be in the data center when this thing is going off, so... Um, in a home lab, it's one thing to be careful of is when you put enterprise equipment that used to be in a data center, you put it in your quiet home. Just check a look to see if you can replace those fans with something a little more uh, environmentally friendly for you, your partner, your dog, whatever. All right, so here's me just putting the screws back in. Nothing much to see, nothing to see here. Move along, move along. There are quite a lot of screws. And honestly, I hadn't made a note of which one goes where, but it was pretty easy to do. Uh, the fan then gets clamped down, but all sides. Check the powers in. That's blinking lifting, all good. All right, let's put the, um, let's put the plates back on. All right, lids on. Screw it down. You can see it takes two power supplies there, an AC and a DC. That's fairly common as well, and you'll see you'll see that in use in a lot of data centers. But for me, only AC. Somebody you can also get a good shot there of the stack-wise ports on the back. Uh, Cisco does have uh, this back plane, this virtual back plane, which you can use on this series, the 3750, the 3850. I've really not seen any others apart from those. I'm not a big uh, switchy kind of guy these days. Uh, mostly Juniper actually, uh, with the uh, EX stuff, which has a similar. Backplane, virtual backplane, to create virtual chassis. The idea is that you just manage one switch rather than, well, one switch stack rather than one switch. So you'll have one point of administration that takes care of more than one device. All right, so console plugged in, attach the power, and wait for the good news. And there we go. So switch is booting. Um, again, I recorded the upgrade of the firmware which I. Uh, just just installed the uh, 12244. Uh, sorry about that, but I, uh, I I lost it. Sorry. But yeah, upgraded, cleaned, ready for action. Um, pretty happy with that. And I guess the next video will be configuration and setting up the management network. Take care.